In the previous video, we discussed about how oxygen is transported by hemoglobin. If you want to watch that video first, the link is in the description. Now in this video, we are going to discuss about the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. This graph shows the relationship between the partial pressure of oxygen PO2 in the blood and the percentage saturation of hemoglobin with oxygen. On the x-axis, we have PO2 that's partial pressure of oxygen in millimeters of mercury. On the y-axis, we have hemoglobin saturation percentage. This curve illustrates how readily hemoglobin binds to oxygen that's called loading and how easily hemoglobin releases oxygen that's called unloading at different oxygen pressures. Now let's see the whole process in detailed manner. We see in this graph we have partial pressure of oxygen on x-axis in mmHg and on y-axis we have oxygen saturation percentage aka hemoglobin saturation with oxygen on y-axis in percentage. If we plot the graph it comes like this a sigmoidal curve. We see this is already observed calculations. We put some dots on the graph on the given observed data and then connect these points and we get a graph like this shown in the diagram. On this curve we have the venous point where we have the saturation of oxygen at 75% and partial pressure of oxygen at 40 mmHg. Then we have the arterial point where saturation of oxygen is 97% with partial pressure of oxygen at 100 mmHg. Now we divide the graph into two regions. One region shown in the yellow is after 60 mmHg and other one is before 60 mmHg. The 60 mmHg is actually the clinical threshold point where partial pressure of oxygen is 60 mmHg. Oxygen saturation is 90 to 91% and this marks the transition between steep and plateau region. So yellow one is plateau zone and blue one before 60 mmHg is steep zone. We see in the steep zone the small change in PO2 causes large change in HB saturation. In this zone we mostly see O2 unloading. Whereas in plateau zone the large change in PO2 causes little change in HB saturation. A stable zone we can say where we get the O2 loading. This is what the graph depicts. Now we have some standard parameters for the curve, where pH is 7.4, temperature 37 degrees Celsius, partial pressure of carbon dioxide that's PCO2 40 mmHg, and normal physiological concentration of 2,3 BPG. These are considered the baseline conditions under which the standard oxyhemoglobin dissociation curve is drawn. From this baseline, any change in these factors will shift the curve either to the left or to the right. Now moving forward, for curve to be shifted left, we see it's the high pH, that means alcoholysis, low temperatures, low PCO2 concentration, low concentration of 2,3 BPG. All these conditions favors O2 loading in lungs and increased affinity of hemoglobin for O2, thus the curve shifts towards the left. For right, we need low pH that means acidosis and all other factors up like high temperatures, high PCO2 and high levels of 2,3 BPG. These factors favors O2 unloading in tissue and decrease the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. Now let's see how the graph shifts left and right under the given parameters. First we see we have the normal standard curve with pH 7.4, temperature 37 degrees Celsius, PCO2 40 mmHg and 2,3 BPG at 5 millimolar concentration. And when we change the pH first we keep it at 7.6 pH, then decrease other values like temperatures down, PCO2 down, 2,3 BPG down, the curve shifts towards the left as shown in the animation. Now reset the parameters. If we decrease the pH, like we keep it around 7.2 pH, we are seeing the graph shifting towards the right. And then increase the temperature to 39, increase PCO2, increase 2,3 BPG levels also. All the factors drag the curve towards the right as shown in the animation. So this is how the curve shifts when the physiological factors change. And in this diagram, we can see both the shifts left and right in comparison with standard sigmoidal curve. 
so this is what the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve is i hope you like the video if you like it give it a thumbs up you can support me work on patreon or youtube and make sure to subscribe this channel thanks